Hey, what's up? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Simply Pod Logical, a Simply Nail Logical podcast. Hello, everyone. It's me, the pastel queen. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, you too. You look like banana medicine. I like your outfit. I feel like banana medicine. Mm. I feel kind of sick. Oh, well, that's not good. You know what's funny? I, I don't think I've been sick in like three years. Yeah. But me I feel either. like I feel like I'm maybe fighting off a bit of a cold. Actually, though? Yeah. Oh, I ben. need some banana medicine. Could you could you arrange for that? <laughs> I I could get you a bottle or two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, please do. Uh, I did want to Okay, on the last podcast, I said some inflammatory things about uh dog breeds or pit bulls specifically people were mad at me i guess i just wanted to clarify that's not really we weren't really having a real conversation about this it just sort of came up uh in passing like we were talking about or i guess i was talking about if you were naked and fighting an animal uh that's some animals are more dangerous than others anyway uh I'm not an expert on dogs, but I, I guess what I'll say is I don't think any particular dog breed is like inherently uh, violent or dangerous. It's more about how people uh, train their dogs is the biggest issue. And if anything, I think there should just be liability or responsibility associated with owning a dog that is more capable of being more violent than other dogs. Uh, I think that's all I want to say about that. Yeah. Uh, and people do stand. People were mad at me for just like, people stand for five hours at a Taylor Swift concert and people are like, Ben doesn't know people work and stand. I don't think they were mad. I thought I clarified and I, I was like, just in the context of being at a concert, I, I, I don't know, but whatever. I don't think people were mad. I think they were just people like. People are mad. You, you, maybe they need to calm down. Is that a Taylor Swift lyric? Maybe. You need to calm down, Right. Isn't it? Swifty. We're just here to have fun. Yeah. I don't want to make anyone angry. That's not, never the goal. Nope. Am I the monster, Christine? I don't know. Are you a, <laughs> are you a jock? Okay. Oh, yeah. That's what we're doing today. Or a jerk. <laughs> we're doing, you, how'd you find this? Okay. Christine found a quiz that tells you whether you're a jock, a goth, a nerd. Or a prep. Or I think prep is the last one. Pre preppy? Prep? Yeah. So I found this on the Simply Neological Discord. Shout out to the member who provided it. You can join the Simply Neological Discord. I'll put a link down below. But I feel like it's a really great place for people to make suggestions. We have um, a thread in there called stream-podcast ideas. So if you have any other ideas or quizzes or whatever you want us to do, feel free to share them in there. But yeah, I grabbed this from there. And then I looked at the quiz and I was like, this is actually interesting. I wonder if I would classify as as a prep, a goth or what? And I think it kind of pulls from um, other alignment style quizzes where it's like, where do you sit in this quadrant of four very like obvious stereotypes? Are you like far to one side? Are you smack in the middle? I think it drew inspiration from like political alignment or the, what's the one called where it's like chaotic, good, whatever. Oh, D&D. &D the D&D &D alignment, alignment, sorry. Yeah, yeah, of course. And we did Which something like that before. Yeah. So it's kind of like that's the same vibe. But here it's like, are you a jock, nerd, prep, goth? And where do you sit in that qu quadrant? So we'll put the link to this down below too. So is this supposed to tell me whether I, what I would be right now or what I was in high school? I think let's take it as we are right now. No yeah. one uses these labels outside of a high school context, right? Like, um, I don't know. It's pretty Maybe? unusual. Like some, if some like 40 year old guy is like, I'm a jock <laughs> or like okay, I'm well, preppy. <laughs> probably less likely, but you might be more inclined to call yourself like a nerd. Maybe. Maybe as you age, there's more nerds. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Okay. So do you have a prediction? Do you want to do predictions okay, or yeah, you just yeah, want yeah. to do it? So, hmm. I are, feel, are you a jock, nerd, prep or goth? I feel like I'm not, I'm not going to cleanly fall into any one category. That's my prediction. This is usually the case. It's funny. People kind of work that way. Yeah. Well, they don't just neatly fall into boxes. Yeah. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I think I'm going to be closest to nerd and maybe a bit prep if my understanding of what I think the definition of prep in this is the same, then I think I'll be like nerd, maybe a bit prep somewhere in there. What does prep, preppy mean even? I thought it means like really put together, really organized, trying to make things go a certain way. I'm just guessing though. I actually didn't. We'll see at the end what they, how they define prep. Like I care how I'm put together. 
like how I look. That could be one factor, but I feel like I may not really get those points, but I'll get the points about like how they like being organized more generally. So I feel like that's maybe where I'll pull a little bit prep. I, I hope I'm a jock nerd because I jock think that's nerd? fun to say. I'm a jock nerd. What does a jock nerd mean to you? Like, what do you think that just, like, definition half, is? Half nerd, half jock. What's a jock? Like, I'm, I'm smart, but I could dunk a basketball. You're smart, but cool. Was that you in high school? Yes. <laughs> I, no, that makes it seem like I was great at everything. I was like a little bit athletic, a little bit smart. <laughs> so I, <laughs> like I fell into average. those two buckets, but not at the top of the pile, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. You want to do the quiz? Yeah, let's go. All right. Question one. Uh, or it's like how much you agree with statements. Yes. Okay. So uh, fantasy, science fiction, and comic books offer unique perspectives on the world and humanity. Christine, let's let's be honest. Have it, you, it's a have, scale of one to five, so like yeah. strongly disagree to neutral, and then very much agree. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever read a fantasy, science fiction, or comic book? Chronicles of Narnia. Have you read that? Yeah. That's yeah. That's fantasy. Yeah. That's very biblical, though. Is it? Yeah. Because I was too young to make that connection. The lion is Jesus. The lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. Yeah, Jesus, the witch, and the wardrobe. Got it. Yeah, that's not how the, the teacher explained it to me, mm -hmm. <laughs> but sure. The whole, the idea of going into a world through your wardrobe is pretty cool, though. Yeah, I wish. I read that book as, when I was a kid, just the first one, So, and I always thought of, uh, I always, whenever I open my closet, I'm like, what if I could just go through a world? There was like can a I, world Can I make there. a confession that'll make me seem pretty dumb? I don't really care. <laughs> For the longest time, I was confused between like that book and Harry Potter because I, I, I didn't, I never read Harry Potter, yeah. but like I heard people talking about it and then you'd see like some visuals, whether it was the cover of the book or maybe the early movies. And I was always like, I thought they were the same. <laughs> because they just like seemed really similar in tone and majestic. Similar about them? I don't know, just like fucking well, actually, people you know what, flying like, on broomsticks, it's kind like, of shit. Like I'm, I don't know. Br British kids like teleporting to a magical world. Yeah, the, yeah. And, there, and I wasn't there was really a train. <laughs> there was a train in Narnia too. Yeah. There, hey, maybe mm -hmm. you might be onto something. Maybe they are the same. They tried <laughs> to make Narnia into. A movie? Um, a movie series. I think they only made the first one, though, and mm -hmm. they didn't continue. And I went to see it. And uh, towards the end of the movie, I guess these kids wander into our, our theater, just because I guess they're hopping around to different movies. They sit down, and this, this horse just starts talking. <laughs> and this kid goes, Is that horse? <laughs> that horse just talk? <laughs> I think they were really high. It was pretty funny. <laughs> Funnier funny. than the movie. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I used to read uh, comic books and fantasy, mm. more fantasy than sci-fi, I would say. I read a lot of Archie comics now that I think about it. You more of a Betty or a Veronica kind of I like I like them both for different reasons. I feel oh. like they're they're kind of iconic characters in a story that gets perpetuated even today to have them each as like, you know, the type of character. So Was I wouldn't it, say one over the other. The other. guys are such losers though, right? Well, Archie was kind of a nerd. No, Jughead was a nerd. Archie was more jockey. I can't remember. Didn't Jughead just eat hamburgers? That was his defining quality? Yeah, but he was kind of a nerd too. That was the point. Anyways, people who watch Riverdale will be like, no, there's way more nuance because now that like, Archie became a, sh a show I haven't watched, so I'm not familiar. <laughs> Anyways. Do we agree with the statement? Okay. <laughs> um <laughs> okay, fantasy, science fiction, and comic books offer unique perspectives on the world and humanity. On the world. I mean, I would say this about any art any or fiction. novel. Fiction can do this. A lot of it doesn't. I'm not going to learn, I think, much about humanity reading Archie comics. Yeah, Th that's where I'm kind of torn. Like, offer unique perspectives. So it's just a perspective. It's <laughs> not like it's more information. I'm going to slightly agree. How about that? Okay, Put me neutral. Okay. <laughs> neutral. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Neither Ed. agree nor disagree. <laughs> All right. Statement two. Traditional male gender roles and expressions of masculinity are important and should be celebrated. I know who wrote this question. Who? Andrew Tate. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, I, I, okay. I want to hear your perspective uh, yeah, yeah. on this first. <laughs> okay. Let the woman talk first. <laughs> yes. Um, Tell me about traditional masculinity, Christine. I don't think there's anything wrong with if you are male and you want to conform and look and whatever, like what is the norm for a male? That's not what I mean, just to clarify. 
but I don't think that celebrating them um, has the same effect as kind of the inverse of this because I feel like when you celebrate something that's already the norm and already like the standard, it ends up potentially just causing more harm to those who do not participate in that norm or standard and can kind of in that respect be seen more as like a an attack against those who do not fit that traditional norm. So I kind of feel like celebrating is really more important for those who have been part of the marginalized community or group, whatever it may be. And so I don't feel like this is a statement that I agree with. I think like I'm not saying you can't be a traditional male whatever. That's not what I mean. I just don't think like celebrating it is really necessary for you. I feel like that answer makes sense with all like the context and baggage of like the current trend of of like male influencer, male role model influencers on like Instagram these days. Mm. Because to me, it's not like the any sort of reinforcement or celebration of like some things we associate with masculinity isn't in and of itself the problem. It's that it's usually packaged with some guy who's trying to sell you a course on drop shipping who tells you that uh, men have characteristics that are like not only different, but like better than women or something. In exactly. Some regards, so right? that's, that's the inference I was trying to say that in doing so, if you call it celebration, whatever, or pushing your narrative, it's just, you end up hurting people who yeah, aren't. But I guess just if I try to ignore the fact that like these toxic people exist, I think that the statement in and of itself isn't something I disagree with. If like, I guess it completely depends but on what But is it you... necessary? Here, I'm challenging you respectfully. Is it necessary to celebrate something that's already the standard and the norm? I just, Why is it the celebration on... required? Well, I no one's saying it's necessary. Just is it a good thing? Is it a good thing to reinforce? If the kind of qualities you're talking about are just like confidence and, you know, being able to depend on yourself is being that, healthy. Is that, why is that traditional male? It's anyone. I know this is subjective. This yeah. is just what people associate with masculinity, right? Listen to a lot of like yeah. these, it's a lot of like gym influencers, like be in good shape. Women do, can do the same. Well, and yeah. there's a lot of women influencers who promote okay, that but, too. Okay, but what are traditional feminine characteristics then? These are all stereotypes. It yeah, might be like sure. be, be uh, empathetic to other people. Men, I, men can do that too. Yeah, Anyone I know, I know. I guess what I'm where I'm coming from is like I feel like perpetuating the very traditional one, and this says the word traditional, so I'm assuming it's a little more like men are superior energy. But I'm just making that assumption based on how I see that word and its association with male gender. But roles. that's exactly what I'm saying. There's a lot of baggage people are bringing into the statement that I don't, I'm trying to not. Oh, I feel like it's always going to come with that. I don't know. I just feel like when you're the standard or the norm and have been this whole time and haven't really faced uh, oppression, then it's not for you to be like celebrating it because you just end up indirectly, whether intentionally or not, hurting other pe other person. It's like we have pride parades, but we don't have uh, parades for straight people because it's not necessary and it's not fair and they're not the marginalized group so i feel like the celebration should be awarded to the group who yeah. deserves it and just in case like we maybe appeal to anyone out there who thinks it's not that like straight white men aren't capable of facing hardship or oppression but they're not facing it for being those things you know what i mean yeah they're facing it for being assholes or <laughs> for discriminating no, against I, we're, people we're, we're not hearing each other i don't think no sorry i'm saying like i think part of the reason a lot of young men listen to people like andrew tate and stuff is that they mm. maybe feel threatened by a society that is just more now generally recognizing the values and humanity of diverse viewpoints which is a good thing or a but they're people. intimidated by that but no i i also think there's this weird sort of uh perception of I want to be careful how I put this. Like, if you're told, like, oh, you're just a white man, you've never faced oppression. But I'm just, I'm yeah. some poor guy who grew up in poverty in the middle of fucking nowhere. And I haven't had, like, the benefits of what are more, like, class issues. Than... Mm -hmm. So it's it's not saying that person, that person will never have, like, the, the life experience or face the hardship of, like, you know, racism in America or things like that. But I think just, like, reminding that person of how privileged they are for 
those characteristics when they feel like they haven't had a good life or certain advantages mm -hmm. makes them way more attracted to people yeah. who want to tell them they should be proud of who they are for who they're like it, it makes them more attracted to these sort of like uh F more fringe uh, kind of potentially groups. yeah yeah i, I, I was see searching for mean. the word like grifters people who want to make money off of them by appealing to their sense of of lost identity or something yeah intersectionality definitely plays a role here where it's not just like only one factor that can lend you to to being in an oppressed situation or group it's it's multiple and it's way more nuanced than that but i do find people just way more often want to use just like one term or group to describe a person as opposed to kind of looking at it through a more layered approach where you're right like social class does have a huge role on your experience in the world um, as does a lot of other um, Usually, you know, ways yeah. of classifying people. And that's why a lot of these these men's rights activists or whatever you want to call them, like male gurus, often appeal to uh, financial independence is mm. often a huge part of their what they are it's selling like MLMs to. for dudes. Honestly, it is very much that. It's Who like, let me think they're smart. Pay me to teach you about drop shipping is a big part of a lot of these guys' model. Or just like pay me to teach you how to be an entrepreneur. And it's like they're literally just making money off of telling people like the very basics of business. <laughs> anyway, so maybe I've got rose colored glasses on, but I. I want to slightly agree with it just because I think you could celebrate characteristics we typically associate with masculinity. Like the uh, positive one. So you're looking at it through a lens of like, I am thinking of the positive ones. Yes, Whereas I not. struggle to see that, <laughs> to be there, honest. You have good reason to struggle to see that. And I maybe understand. that's just because I'm a woman. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I struggle with this sentence. Okay. And I strongly disagree. But okay. You know what? Actually, no, I, I one point disagree. I don't want to strongly disagree because I feel like that might be too radical of a perspective that I actually agree with. Okay. So just slightly. We're taking a lot. Of, maybe we should do this a little quicker. That was, that was a big one, though. Like that that, that, That's worth one. the conversation. There's okay. a lot to unpack there. And I'm sure there's way more we could say just about that. Sure. Uh, statement three, gaming offers great opportunities for learning, problem solving, and socializing. Uh, mm. I strongly agree that it can do that, but it's mm. not that it necessarily does that. I strongly agree as well. Yes. I think the socializing thing, you're going to have some people be like, socializing on the internet isn't the same thing as in real life. But I feel like you can totally, you know, learn to participate in communities and whatever just by online gaming with co-op games, etc. Yeah. Uh, four, rejecting societal norms is a key aspect of personal freedom. This is like anarchist question. Reject everything. <laughs> Are you an anarchist? Is Are it jock, anarchist? nerd, prep, goth, or anarchist? Goth. If you're a goth, you select very much agree. That's I think uh, being having the capacity to reject societal norms is mm -hmm. a huge aspect of, of uh, being a, a, an autonomous person. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But... I also sort of reject the idea that it is the rejection in and of itself that makes you mm. free. It's like people who are contrarian just for the sake of it. Yeah, I I agree with you. And while I do feel like sometimes I'm a little bit contrarian, I think ultimately I'm only doing that when I feel like it it is true to myself and not just because I want to defy some mm -hmm. norm. So I would pick in the middle. Because okay. I think the middle is is where I feel it's it's neither here nor there. It it really depends like the reason for the rejection. All right, and I slightly agree. Okay. Uh, five physical fitness and competition are important aspects of personal growth and development. So physical fitness is a very different thing than competition because you can be competitive and it have nothing to do with physical fitness. So what do you interpret this question? This is, is like a very like Joe Rogan esque type thing. <laughs> Joe that, Rogan like, would a like lot it. of people, especially men, are unhappy because they don't have. Uh, it's because like it's in our DNA to be like chasing down animals with rocks. <laughs> you know what, what I mean? <laughs> have you never heard this argument? Not that people the now are like so sedentary and just live like sad, miserable lives of you know. Hmm. Uh, that really your the body is designed to like move and do, do things. things yeah and you know people without having that sort of adversity in your life you just sort of wallow in a you know malaise of nothingness yeah that's very poetic <laughs> I, I don't 
agree with a lot of things Joe Rogan says, but I actually think there is some truth to these statements. I think that people who have no physical mm-hmm. activity or sense of, of like com- competition, competition could mean a whole. That doesn't even imply physical to me. That just means like, are you motivated right. to try and grow your your Instagram page? I, I agree. <laughs> it's broader than physical competition. I think people need some some challenge to overcome in their lives to feel a sense of purpose so and accomplishment. I think for that reason, I'm gonna agree because I do think Slightly healthy agree. competition can encourage your personal development because you learn more about yourself when you face certain things that may be challenging and then you overcome them or you lose, but you learn from it. So I do think it can help with your development. Yeah, I'm going to slightly agree too. Uh, Six, luxury is a core principle when it comes to my material possessions. Mm, Don't we care about luxury goods, I love it. I'm only going to slightly... Disagree, because I think it would be dishonest to... To say that you hate luxury. To say that, oh, I just completely reject luxury lifestyle and goods. I I like having nice things sometimes. How can I say, like, I bought Gucci nail polish. You know, I can't, (laughs) like, I would be lying. (laughs) I I would say slightly disagree, because it's definitely, like, it is not a core principle for me at all. (laughs) But, but yeah, I feel like saying totally disagree is like, like, do you, have you... Uh, yeah. It's kind of like virtue signaling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, a little bit. All right. Uh, seven, pain and sacrifice are necessary for achieving greatness. Mm. It's from that saying, all pain, no gain. What? No. That expression? Is that what they say? That, that boomers use? All pain, no gain? All pain, no gain. Yeah. Where they're like, if you don't have pain, then you don't get a gain kind of thing. All pain, is? no gain. Like, all is I get is pain, expression? I don't get gain? Maybe I'm confusing it. I'm actually second guessing myself now. Is it no pain, all gain? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no, but it's like, not. Wait, there's also beauty is pain. That, that's one that people no, use. No, I think all you're right. Time. I don't know why that sounded so strange I don't know to why. me. Because I, I just. I think it's all I, pain, no gain. Hold on. I, I need to, like, <laughs> am, I, am I losing my I think my you're mind? right. But now, when I hear that statement and try to think about what it should mean, all pain. No pain, no gain. Used, it's no pain, no gain. No, it's all pain, no gain. Used to say that it is necessary to suffer or work hard in order to succeed or make progress. Isn't it no pain, no gain? Like without pain, you don't get gain? Why Not is the, all uh, pain and you, you don't gain okay, anything. The internet is giving me an answer for all pain, no gain. But I think you're right. I think you're right now that you say that. I think it is no pain, no gain. Okay, you're right. <laughs> Sorry. I want only pain and none of the benefit. <laughs> Oh my god, that is a good expression. Then. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Ben that's is, how a life is. For, ben is correct, you know. but for the record, the internet is also confused because when I search "all pain, no gain," I still got that definition. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, anyways, so it's it's that logic of thinking that you have to suffer in order to get good shit later. Uh, I I think this is true. How true? How true? At least slightly true. Right? What what personal greatness uh, are you achieving with any uh, with any I just, hardship yeah, and sacrifice? Maybe I'm overanalyzing. No, I definitely am. I feel like it's not a healthy mindset to think that the only way I'm going to get good shit in life is if I make a sacrifice or go through pain. And it's like that's not always true. You know, that's kind of dramatic. <laughs> I, I, I don't feel like it's going to be that much. Cuz I'm not I don't think greatness is, you know, me inheriting a billion dollars from my parents who owned a diamond mine or something. Greatness has to represent mm. something you personally achieved and it doesn't necessarily have to be material uh, success. And I just don't know how that happens without so for example, hard work and sacrifice. You're competing in the Olympics, you know, and you want to win the mm-hmm. gold medal. I think most Olympians would say that they went through pain or sacrifice in and if they to didn't win there. a medal it was all pain no gain <laughs> no but they, <laughs> they, gain, they gain something yeah yeah well think of even you like we have collectively experienced a lot of success in in business and things that has come at a, a pretty incredible personal cost and sacrifice i would say uh yeah it, but sometimes it's the the value exchange is appropriate like, well, sure, like, and sense. I don't regret yeah. it, but I, I can, 
I think a lot of people for their success have as much as people think of rich people as people who had like advantages and I think inherited that, wealth. That's true in a lot of cases. Yeah, I but, think when they're just talking about people who just inherited it and it just mm-hmm. got dropped on them. I think a lot of people who are successful in and built their own success did it at great personal cost, I think. I think yes and no. But just for the statement in and of itself, I think I'm going to be in the middle. Because I don't think it's like definitely necessary, but I think pain and sacrifice may come okay. in the process. So I'm in the middle. Okay, boomer. Uh, <laughs> question uh, eight. Winning is everything. The pursuit of victory should be relentless. <laughs> okay. I disagree. I feel like a coach wrote this, like a football coach. <laughs> <laughs> you win or we die or something like that i don't know it's Whatever about the mean. inches in front of your face i'm al pacino okay so uh i disagree do you strongly disagree i strongly disagree that the pursuit of victory should be relentless i think you should it doesn't seem healthy it kind of sounds like they're saying pursue it at all costs even if people or things are sacrificed which is like mm, i don't know <laughs> step on other people yeah exploit other people to get so, ahead to yeah win. nope no. Okay. Strongly disagree. All right. Nine. Emotional intensity and introspection are important aspects of personal growth. Emotional I think intensity. So. Intensity is a very different thing than introspection. They're really like, maybe they just like alliterations. I don't know. But I feel like those are two very different things. They're the, I think it's possible to be, to be too introspective. You know what I mean? To be too overanalyzing of self. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I'm maybe guilty of that a bit. But I, I also just don't know how you But does it help grow. you grow? Well, how does personal growth happen if you're not really even... Reflecting. You, reflecting. Yeah, you that. have to be reflective on your own experiences and how you think about things in order to maybe change or improve those thought processes. So I would say that they're important. I'm, I'm going to strongly agree. Yeah, I would say so as well. Okay. Okay. 10. Classic timeless fashion is always in style strongly reject i mean i don't know like a designer might agree like if they're like this is the classic shoe I think you can f- wear at any time fas- fashion is a social construct yeah what does in style mean like everyone agrees universally what that is it looks in good? style today is not what is there a such thing as timeless well it's, it's like when people who design houses they're like oh this is a classic timeless window trim that it doesn't matter <laughs> what era or like what era Window we're trip. in, like people are gonna be okay with it. So maybe from that logic, maybe there's some truth to it. But like I'm not the, yeah, but like, the uh, barometer. A hundred years from now, people might look at that and then say that oh, that looks like an antique. Yeah. You know. Yeah, true. So there really is nothing if we're thinking of it over, you know, a real sense of time rather than just like one decade to another. I strongly disagree. I don't really care. So I'm going to put in the <laughs> okay. middle. Like, I literally don't the, care about this question. <laughs> you don't care? I you have don't no have opinion. opinion. <laughs> I have no opinion. Okay. Uh, 11. I feel a strong connection to online communities and forums where I can engage with like-minded individuals and share my passions and interests. Yes. There's no way you're not answering. <laughs> strongly, strongly agree. This. I have to as well. Yeah. Even if I'm a lurker more than I'm a participant. Yeah. Uh, 12 high quality understated luxury goods are a tasteful way of signaling one's success Un- what's an understated luxury good like not like Gucci gaudy with no logo? giant in your face so like a brand so name, not wearing not... a big shirt that says gucci but it, but just, it, it is I, gucci but it is i am wearing gucci but it's just like you don't know it's a little less uh, conspicuous my uh Okay, I don't care about this. This is also like (laughs) signaling your success. Like, okay, there's tons of (laughs) people who are very successful who like literally don't give shit about what they wear. Yeah, that's a really, yeah, that's a a real trend you see, right? Like tech billionaires who just Mm want to walk around in like comfortable khakis or sweatpants and aren't wearing, you know. And then you'll see cases of people who came into new money and they're the ones trying to kind of overdo it or compensate and like show that they have money. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, okay. I don't know. All right. We, okay. we agree. I like, uh, you know, I like sweatpants. I like my cat ears. I've only been wearing sweatpants the last few years. Bless you, Ben. Uh, I'm allergic. 
I'm going to sneeze again. Could you read this? Could I read it? Okay, yeah. question 13. <laughs> Deba debating and discussing complex ideas and theories is a valuable form of intellectual exercise. Debating and discussing complex ideas. Um, yeah, for sure. I think like the way that we all investigate, challenge our own opinions, consider other people's and think of theory, theoretical application on why we do what we do is intellectual exercise. That's all. I thought the question was going to be like, is it valuable? Um, well, it's just is a valuable it... form of intellectual exercise, but like it is the definition of intellectual exercise. So, uh, oh, I think we both strongly agree here. Mm -hmm. My only caveat as someone who used to be very much enamored with the idea of discussing complex ideas and philosophy for the sake of it. I felt like I came to a place where it felt like a lot of that was just very circular, self-serving and didn't mm -hmm. actually have any real life application or meaning outside of those debates. So I, I feel like it is a valuable form of intellectual exercise, but it's also uh, not very rewarding when it has no practical application. Yeah. Yeah. And kind of just, uh, you've discussed this before, but it can be kind of overdone in academic circles. And then people outside are kind of looking at it like it's just a big sociological circle jerk. Exactly. So, circle jerk is a good you. word. Okay. Uh, halfway done. Oh, oh, oh. 14. Death, the supernatural, and macabre. Macabre. Macabre? Macabre. Macabre? You say that in French? Macabre. Hold a certain allure and beauty. I think goths would agree <laughs> if I had to guess who's this. This is a little on the nose. Um, Honestly, I mm. I hate the sentiment. Mm. I understand if like as an adolescent, you're sort of mm. learning who you are and maybe you romanticize things that are morbid and things like, yeah. I'm not going to judge someone for that. I think as an adult, you maybe would not have had to experience loss. <laughs> and things to romanticize uh, Very true. these things. Uh, so I strongly disagree with the statement. Yeah, to say that there's something beautiful about death is probably not what I think at all. Now, this sentence also says the supernatural, so it's not just about death, but I also don't really think that's something that my mind really goes to explore, to be honest. Uh, yeah. I don't really think about ghosts and how beautiful they are. Just <laughs> beautiful. Just when we played Paranormal Activity. Wait, is that what it was called? No, Phasmophobia. That's a movie. Phasmophobia. <laughs> that was a good Phasmophobia. game. No, that was it was fun. terrifying. It was All not beautiful. October, we're going to play it was Phasmophobia. Scary. <laughs> Do you strongly disagree or just disagree? I strongly disagree. All right, 15. The darker and more mysterious aspects of life are fascinating and worthy of exploration. Okay, this is different than the last question because it's not saying like death and things that have no evidence of existence are fun. But this is like just darker and mystery are fascinating. I think I, 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 think I, I agree. I'm, like, I watch Unsolved Mysteries. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree, but not strongly. Just disagree. Same page. Stop copying my homework. Uh, 16, family is a source of pride and support and should be respected and cherished. This sounds very traditional. Oh, he's going to blow his nose again. <laughs> um, I think family can be a source of support and pride if you have a supportive family. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think family by default is a source of pride and support if that's not your situation. So I don't think you can by default say I respect my family and cherish them. What if they're, they're a bunch of pieces of shit? Yeah, well, I think we, we share a similar view here that's a little less traditional. And it's not like that idea of like respect your elder family members just because they're family members, even if they are giant pieces of shit. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's really either of our experience necessarily. Not that I, I'm not trying to speak for you, but it's like e even if I do feel, you know, close to and uh, – do respect my family or value the relationship I have with my family. I don't see this blanket statement as applying. It's not a given. It yeah. can totally be true. And I'm happy <clears throat> for those where this is true. It's not a knock on. Like, yeah. it's not saying family's not important at all. Yeah. So I feel like maybe neutral is kind of like, because it's completely dependent on context. That's how I'm going to interpret it. I think I'm going to put one disagree. Okay. 
Uh, 17, life is often unpredictable and chaotic, and that is part of what makes it interesting. We love chaos. <laughs> actually, I don't know if I love chaos. Like, actually, though. You don't like chaos. I like you it like in, routine. I like it in a video game. <laughs> I like God's and chaos in a video game. You like being in control of the chaos. Yeah. Hmm. I think it, it can be fun and interesting, but I don't like when it's totally unpredictable because I feel like there's just so much risk. Life the, would be boring if it was totally predictable. So I feel yeah, but, like I need to at least. But anyone agree. who says that, like, that's just not fair. No one's life is actually predictable. Like that doesn't even make sense. So you're kind of just being hyperbolic about people who like routine. I think routine is fine, but there's <laughs> okay. always going to be shit that you can't predict. So that's that's a given. So what you disagree? Um, yes, just one. Okay, it's the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, 18, good grooming and clean cut appearances are crucial for making a good impression. I didn't shower today. I did. I'm making a bad impression. <laughs> yeah, you do. You could put a little more effort in. This is just <laughs> like, remember when someone argued with me over this? Yeah, it was the lady who called me a gosh darn blueberry scone. Yeah, maybe she was right. I feel like, <laughs> or maybe she was like. Remind, remind oh, people what, what the, uh, disagreement was i believe that i said that i would wear black leggings to work <laughs> with, with like a, yeah. a comfortable more professional looking sweater or something and that like no one cared and she'd be like that's like you gosh down blueberry scone that's unacceptable and then wrote me an essay about why i should care more about how i portray myself as a young lady in business or something and i was like okay ma'am <laughs> like i don't know where you work but like i work in an environment that doesn't fucking do that to me so and i understand that people work in different environments where it may matter more you know to the people around you but um i was fortunate enough to not have to deal with that in my last position and my current position sure there, there's a different you're making it about like uh you know, being looking work appropriate or looking good at work or something though. Mm -hmm. But this is like a broader point of just like, do you care just about how you look in life day to day? And like everyone exists on a bit of a spectrum here, I think, you know, there's like pure comfort, which is just, you know. Oh, I wish that was a scale. Like where, where do you exist? Pure comfort? <laughs> where are we on the spectrum? <laughs> yeah. Pure comfort, pure beauty. <laughs> Sometimes True beauty. you can be comfortable and beautiful at the same time. Wow. Must be nice I mean, for those you, people. Well, you can. Not all of us can. Oh, stop. Like, Shut up. <laughs> okay. Do you know what I mean? Like, let's say like we're going out on a date. We're going to a dinner. It's nice mm -hmm. to put on clothes yeah. that make you feel good about how you look. Yeah, that's fine. So I just feel like, but you err way more on the side of just rejecting no. this idea altogether. I, I wear things that I think look cute. You know, I'll, I'll wear, I'll match my pastel hoodie to my pastel nails. And I do this because I like it. I think it looks cute and I just like wearing it, you know? And okay. I don't know. I'm I in an environment than, where it doesn't really matter. I think that's different than most people's perception of what it, it means is? to get dressed oh. up. Yeah. Yeah. You're not wrong, but my lifestyle <laughs> I'll isn't. I'll wear my rainbow hoodie with my yeah, nails. Okay, whatever. It's I like... mean, like if we're going out to like a nice restaurant, yeah, it's usually not something you enjoy or look forward to the idea of having to put on like nice going out clothes i think right i feel like i'm sure you're not alone in that exactly and people go through phases <laughs> like when i was in university and lived with people and we went out multiple times a week to the bar then yeah like you dress up for the situation but i'm not going into those situations really <laughs> and my situation has changed so you know you just kind of align it with what makes sense for your life but back to the question good grooming <laughs> I guess that's even subjective. Like, what is good grooming? And clean cut appearances are crucial for making a good impression. So the first time you meet someone, the first time you're going for an interview, the first time you're being introduced to someone's parents, I think most people probably think about that and reflect on like, oh, I should fix my hair for this important meeting. I think it would be pretty unreasonable to pretend this isn't it doesn't at, matter at all, all meaningful, yeah. <laughs> right? So I'm going to at least slightly agree with this. Not that I'm saying that's a good thing, but it's just like sort of a recognition of... It's just like you got to do what you got to do kind of thing, even if I'm kind of annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> like I feel like I would do it anyways. Uh, I, I think I'm going to pick neutral though. Okay. I'm still going to pick neutral. Can't be exactly the same as you. You can copy my homework. No, I don't want to. All right, three left. 19. Uh, participating in fandom communities and conventions is a great way to connect with like-minded individuals. 
Who would say no to this? People <clears throat> who hate internet, right? Like if participating I mean, in fandom, is it just the word fandom that's going to set some people off and them just automatically disagree strongly with this? Because if you just take the word fandom out of it. Or convention. Like I'm not going to comic book conventions. I'm not going for, con I don't think I'm going to conventions even for, even for things I like. Yeah. But the question is like communities also, like it doesn't have to be just literally going to a convention. I mean, it would be weird to disagree with this outright, but I feel like I'm only going to slightly agree because I'm not the type of person who is uh, greatly participating or attending things, even for those sort of interests I have. I'd put strongly agree. Okay. Because I think participating in an online community is something that is a great way to connect. Like, absolutely. I don't see anything why it's not. Okay. 20, mental and physical toughness are necessary for overcoming challenges and achieving success. Physical toughness? <laughs> like, I mean, if you're in the line of sport or something, then yes, it would require that. Uh, it depends, like, what track or what industry you're in. If, right, the definition of success in, like, I don't know, the Olympics requires that you're placing first second or third or going to nationals or whatever there's a lot of life you can get through w without requiring any physical toughness and still be successful and achieve success i think yeah but it's just all relative like if that's what you want to go into then yes but like if that's not what you want to go into then no it's not necessary so, yeah the physical success. toughness thing is throwing us off i think if it was just about sort of mental toughness i would feel differently about this i think i'm just going to be neutral on this one yeah, I mean, I think this is kind of a circular question because I do think inherently in going through a challenge, you're going to gain a little bit more of like tough. That's not even like the right word, but like you're going to be able to recalibrate and reevaluate. And if we're thinking that's a synonym for like toughness, because you're like able to think about the situation and move past and find a solution for next time kind of thing, mm -hmm. then I would agree. But I don't really know what they mean by toughness. So I'm just injecting it. What's your answer? Slightly agree, but okay. confused. Let's just move on. Please define. <laughs> All right. 21, tradition and etiquette are important to uphold. <laughs> it's like the one we like. <laughs> okay. We were I laughing immediately. That means strongly disagree. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to just slightly disagree. What? Explain yourself. <laughs> I kind of feel like uh, I think progress is very much about rejecting tradition and etiquette for the sake of it. But at the same time, uh, I think, again, you... the, the same way we were talking about like not being contrarian for the sake of mm -hmm. it, yeah. I think just being someone who wants to reject tradition and etiquette for the sake of it is but also sort of obnoxious. But this isn't about obnoxious. rejecting it. This is just saying, is it important to uphold whatever the existing tradition or etiquette is? So mostly not. But sometimes these things exist for a reason and help offer some stability in society. I'm assuming this isn't the case that it's like coming at the expense of other people yeah, or, or groups, or but just like some social customs maybe have some basis in helping us just all be on the same page of living in a society together. Yeah, I guess you're looking at it more as a proxy for standard practices that have worked for most people over time. Yeah. Whereas when I look at that, I'm just like, I see the worst <laughs> in it, so I hate it. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of people do. All right, last one. I often find myself absorbed in hobbies such as video games, coding, or model building. Ooh, or nail painting. You didn't read that part. It doesn't it's, say it, nail it painting. It does say nail painting. Okay. Yes. My eyes just don't work. Uh, I I do. I would strongly disagree. I mean, really? I mean, agree. Sorry, I said it backwards. <laughs> so I strongly agree, obviously. Okay. Yeah. Not in those hobbies specifically. No, but they're just trying to get a sentiment. I mean, we used to do coding. Did you? Yeah. Did you like coding? Did I you love find coding. you would get? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you should answer strongly to this based I, on the example. I love coding. I am playing more video games, although I'm not the best at it. And I could totally see myself imputing nail painting into this sentence and it would still carry the same. <laughs> Impute. <laughs> it would still carry the same sentiment. So yes. And for what me, about you? For me, it's not just about liking it. It's the way they say you find yourself absorbed in it. I can relate to, for both coding and gaming, I don't really know about model building or what that means, but the idea of feeling a sort of compulsion 
to continue it. You talked about this when you explained how you felt when you were playing Donkey Kong, how you really got absorbed into the moment. Well, that that's more of like a religious experience. <laughs> what? The, this it's is a more... tradition. <laughs> Donkey Kong, it's a tradition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to reject it. <laughs> oh my God. No, the, 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 the idea of being like absorbed into it and feeling this sort of compulsion to play it is... Yeah, is something I've experienced my whole life, I think. So strongly agree. I strongly agree. Yes. So results? Finish? Finish? How are we doing? Oh, we're almost the same. No. <laughs> wow. What? We're okay. usually not that close. You got to stop copying me. Okay. This can't be right. Read your results. Okay, so I am 46.4% goth, 46.4% nerd. Placing me in the LARP category? You're a LARPer. What the hell so does that I. mean? So I'm in the bottom right quadrant. So you're a LARP. So I'm very goth, very nerd? Yeah, but not like totally. You're not at the far, far bottom right of the quadrant. You're closer to the almost in the neutral. Like you're close I'm to being a normie. almost a normie. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're close to being oh, a normie. I see. A true goth or a true nerd, but you're just over the edge. So now you're a LARP. Got you. So I don't lean strong nerd or strong goth. I'm close to normie, but just bumped out a little bit towards nerd and goth. Enough to make you a LARP. No idea how I got towards goth. Read the definition of LARP. So LARP means it stands for live action role playing. <laughs> it is a form of role playing where participants <laughs> physically act out their characters' actions and interact with one another in a simulated world. Uh, LARP should not be understood pejoratively or as an exclusively pertaining to role playing, but as someone who combines the geeky knowledge of nerds with the nonconformity of goths to engage in mm. gaming fantasy worlds and the like i okay <laughs> what do you think you should have been if you scroll up to that chart with yeah that one uh, i don't know what would you have been i want to be a baller a baller so a baller is a jock <laughs> and a prep but like heavily i thought i would be a nerd jock which now that i'm looking at how they've done this alignment chart they have uh they have positioned jock and nerd as if they are opposites, opposites. and i reject yeah. I reject this as uh, testing instrument. <laughs> okay. Okay. You uh, want me to tell you why or why? do you want to do no, your no, results no, explain. first? I really reject this idea. Like this is such like cliche, yeah. uh, high school movie nonsense, this idea <laughs> that there's like the bad mean jocks and the good guy nerds and like that is so like are they're antithetical to each other. I do not agree with that at all. I wonder how you would achieve a jock outcome here like what would you have had to answer it just makes me curious like is it the people who said that traditional masculine roles should be celebrated if you very much agree but does I, that put I, you in john i even gave like a very sort of uh, a little gentle bit. nudge of endorsement of some of those questions and wasn't i'm enough. nowhere near jock nope, wasn't enough so to get jock i have to be like yes yeah, i love masculinity men stuff is the best yeah <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and you would have to say strongly agree to all the questions that were like you have to be mentally and physically challenged to get success. I feel like all those, if you were like strongly agree, would put you in the jaw category. It's also strange to me that goth is their representation of re rejecting societal norms. Because to me, like just the the idea of goth represents something much more specific than that. Yeah, but that's just a term we attribute to what we learned of that term in high school. But I think it does have a broader meaning that isn't just like stereotypically wearing black and hating the world, right? There's like a, a deeper philosophical positioning that at least this test is kind of putting like that. A more global rejection of traditions and norms, which is why we kind of both landed somewhat near that. Yeah, so let's, let's say your results. So we landed in a similar spot. But you lean a little more nerdy than goth, but you're still in the LARP category. So Christine is 37.3% goth, 60% nerd. That's over 50%. That still places you in the LARP category. But yeah, mm -hmm. compared to me, you're a little nerdier, a little less normie. goth, and a little, and less, a little normie. less normie. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so we're not going to read the definition again. It's the same thing. I love how they specify this should not be understood pejoratively. It's like you're not actually doing. You're not actually thing. LARPing. Yeah, that's funny. That I did have a sort of visceral reaction to that. Like they think I'm LARPing. They think I'm getting in a field 
No, well, a, that's they clarified it because they knew and, uh, that that jocks like you would, would get offended. <laughs> jocks like me, I'm not I, a jock. I'm the opposite of a jock. So I guess I didn't really see the outcome of this quiz because I thought I might be part nerd or prep, but I'm the furthest from prep. I kind of wonder what their definition of that was. I wish there was like a definition of all three. Is there something we can? Is there if you scroll down like anything that tells you? The definitions of the others or no? I don't think so. Or just hit types? I don't want to lose your results. Oh, uh, oh those are personality types. Oh. I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to do this live. But okay. uh, yeah, maybe if you had uh, maybe if you had said you care about getting dressed up to go on dates with me, then it would. That's not you what the question more... said. <laughs> like if you clear, care about a clean appearance. Or something like that. Then you I like been washing more my hair. Yeah. I brush my hair sometimes. I care about my outfit. I care I about material possessions. Would have I been. Wear goo- yeah. Yeah. Prep for is sure. definitely like I I care about material aesthetic things. And goth is the opposite, which is why we both ended up more goth. Yeah. Yes, and whereas Jock is all about embracing traditional values and valuing success at all costs. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's why we're nerds, because we rejected a lot of that, so we came down to nerds. So there's no way I could have been the nerd jock I wanted to be. No, you'd have to be a normie. I would just be a normie. I kind of feel like you are a normie, though. Like, if I really? ha- if I had to plot you on this chart, I'd probably just put you a normie. Yeah. Maybe, why? like, a little closer to nerd, but still normie. That's where I would have expected you, know what? I'll you to go. T- I'll take that. Actually, you know what? I'm I'm okay where I landed. You're okay. We're in the same category, though. I'm not too upset. I'm not going to lose sleep over this. Is it's kind of fun that we're both the same. Mm, we, it's nice we to have a little. We can larp together. Uh, we're, we don't have. We 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 agree on important things in life. I think mm-hmm. it's also like it's not like we agree on everything, and it's fun to have a little bit of that. Yeah, you know, it's always fun to bounce. It would be off boring something. if you just agreed with everything I said. It would be. Yeah, yeah. you got to have a, a healthy argument if that makes sense, where you can both understand each other's perspectives, even if you end up disagreeing. Yeah, you know, that happens sometimes. Handled respectfully. <laughs> and then you can end the argument with respectfully. I disagree with your position. <laughs> All right, everyone. Hope you had a fantastic Taco Tuesday. Let us know down in the comments what you are. Or if you reject this quiz altogether, that's okay. You let us know. All right. Yeah, yeah, nerds. Tell us what you are. <laughs> All right, everyone. <laughs> Have a great Taco Tuesday, and we'll see y'all later. Bye. Bye.